I'm Tim Moore from the Bar Tips Lab, and in this very short video, I wanted to talk to you about shadow fighting. Now, I use the word shadow fighting, it's a word that was used in, in World War II, and while it's markedly different from our notion of shadow boxing or shadow kickboxing, when we're shadow boxing, we're moving, which we're trying to develop different attributes, we're trying to figure out are we moving ahead enough, are we moving offline enough, are we pumping the jab out enough. What are we doing? You know, we're, we're building athletics and we're doing so in the context of a sporting boxing match or kickboxing match or whatever we're doing. We're using the same cadence. Round, rounds on, rounds off. You know you can't punch forever, so you take some time. You might hit, hit, move, move your head, whatever. Yeah. Shadow boxing. Everyone understands what that is. Shadow fighting is. How do I build drills that I can do anywhere with no equipment, no partners, and obviously that's never going to be perfect, but it needs to be part of your repertoire. What can I do with, with shadow fighting? Now, a great drill and a great thing I like to talk about is being attacked in everyday life and how inbuilt many things are into our brains. So for example, if we're looking to do a drill for our own self-protection, one of the first things we need to build into our shadow fighting is the thing I was doing before I was attacked. For example, most people attack an opponent when they think they can win. Very few people want a fair fight. So if you're going to get battered, mugged, robbed, whatever, it's not going to be really when you're facing the opponent, apart from very social violence. But most asocial violence, you're going to be attacked when you're doing something else. So what I like to build into drills is get students to spend 20 seconds, one minute, playing out a normal scenario because we've got that muscle memory built in. So I might say, you're all at the bar having drinks and your shadow fighting then is literally you going through the motions of paying, collecting your drinks, ordering stuff, speaking to your friends and getting people to build that in and then at a cue, being able to spontaneously go from I'm just using my tap and go to boom, whatever the massive explosion of violence, it's a really good drill to have. Because people need to know how to go from one context, I'm buying a drink, to I'm protecting myself, I'm defending, I'm attacking, I'm being combative. So how can you get people in that mindset of being able to switch from one mode to another? I find that shadow fighting drills do that quite well. Naturally, you can ramp these up and make them partner drills and kind of stress test drills and all this kind of stuff. But if you're looking for something simple, you can do with big groups of people or small groups of people. If you've got very little time or no equipment or you're just out on the road or you just want to keep that mental keenness, have phases where you set your timer to automatically bleep at different intervals and then go through the motions of a normal, civil scenario, such as I'm buying stuff from a bar take the time to stretch those out a little bit more. Often with scenario training, people tend to jump from, I'm buying a pint, I'm headbutting a man. You know, you want to make sure that people get a little bit normalized. You know, I am genuinely in a bar. I am genuinely buying drinks. I'm genuinely talking to a bar staff. It could be I'm at a cash point. So go through the motions of your cash point, all of them, wallet, open, don't pretend like you're some commando that's always on the lookout for attacks because most people, especially people that preach about being aware all the time, you see them after a seminar and they're completely monging out on something, chatting to a friend. Do you go for a drink after a self-defense seminar? The amount of people you see that are just like, moo, or just talking, not paying attention, you could glass them right there and then. Mostly it's bullshit, to be honest. Most people are on hyper alert in dangerous places and low alert in safe places. And so. You know, when you do these drills, do it with a degree of authenticity. When you go to a cash machine, are you really walking in there like you're a point man in Vietnam? Fuck no, that's it, man. You know, it's very unlikely that you are. So start to build drills based on real environments and the different positions your body will be in when you're in those environments. How you stand paying at the bar is often quite parallel. You don't have one foot before the other. You're quite flat against the bar surface. And your hands are often occupied in this immediate space here. So if the negative stimuli comes from there, 
soon as you're going through that motion of paying or drinking or taking, how do I go from holding my pints to bam, shoving that pint in his face? How do I go from chucking that pint in his face or whacking him with the elbow? There's all this experimentation that you could do. Think about times and places where you're most likely to be attacked when your attention is elsewhere. So at the bar, at the cash machine, going through that. Coming in and out of your car, an easy drill to do with chairs. I'm getting into the car, sitting down on the chair. I'm getting out of the car, sitting down on the chair. Get used to what happens if I'm just getting into the car and then the stimuli happens. So get people used to the shadow fighting principles. Sounds a bit ninja that, doesn't it? Ooh. Get people used to the notion of going from everyday normal life, and typically points where attention is solely focused on a task, and then having to spontaneously defend yourself. So I'm just, you know, I press the button, I've opened the door, I'm about to put my ass into the car, and then there's some cunt. So it's only at that juncture, you know, do I eye blitz him, do I punch him, do I cover, do I crash, do I headbutt, what, whatever. You know, it's up to you. It's your techie, it's your mental opponent. So you, you can play with that, but going through the shadow motions of an everyday task is a really important tool to be able to go from condition A to condition B. And you can see that inside of shops, bars, cash points, getting in and out of vehicles, getting in and out of your own home. Bear in mind that someone wants to rush into your door, why would they bother picking locks or cracking windows? They can just wait for you to get in. You've got your key, you've got your phone in your mouth, there you are in the shopping bag. Everyone has been there fucking around with the key at night. How do you go from experimenting with that to suddenly dealing with some dickhead behind you? That's something that you can build in. Being authentic to your daily life and how you move and things you focus on, and then being able to spontaneously and rigorously defend yourself from there. How do you go from actually having conversations with other people and actually having those conversations and then immediately dealing with a, with a, with a threat, with a stimuli you didn't expect coming? How do people deal with you know, things like projectiles? If you're in a group of people talking, you know, do this with your opponents, fill up a Fanta bottle and just chuck it at them, lob at them. You know, see how they all go, fucking hell, as if a hand grenade had just landed at them. You know, chuck stuff at them, push them, grab them, hit them, hit them and fucking run. You know, run at them, slap them around the head and leg it. You know, get, get your students used to unexpected stimuli in typical environments, in conversation, bars, cinemas, cash machines, coming in your door, coming out your door, answering the door, getting in the car, getting out the car, being a knob and texting on your phone. You know, everyone, no one really has that much awareness when they're using the phone. Let's be honest, no one does. So how do you get people used to, you know, one great thing to do is have a class WhatsApp group where they're all just talking to each other and then explosively suddenly start the drill. Have people actually converse and do so for some time so they start to get into the pattern, the rhythm of conversing, speaking normally. So do a class WhatsApp group, have a conversation, talk for seven minutes, then fucking chuck the Fanta bottle at their head and have it all kick off. You know, get people used to that normalized behavior and then defending themselves, which is really, really important. So shadow boxing is a really important attribute drill. Being able to move, whatever the fuck you're doing, whether you're shadow boxing combatives, whether you're shadow boxing boxing, whether you're tie, whatever the fuck you're doing, I don't really care. That's one important drill. Another important slice of that pie is getting people to go through motions that are already built into their soul. Getting into the house, getting into my car, you know, I'm, I'm putting my ticket through the tube, I am buying beer, I am getting into a car, out of a car, I am texting and not really paying much attention. Going from that, taking some time to have them go through the motions of that and feel it as an authentic movement, this is how I actually open doors, this is how I actually pay for things. This is actually how I tap and go, where an attention is one place. And going from there into spontaneous response to deal with the threat. So it's a really important drill to play with. But the most important thing is having longer than you think is necessary on going through the living aspect. The bars, the cash point, the conversing, the texting, the being on the phone. Spend a good while doing that so people start to normalize and start to act how they normally do and then kick off the response the training the drill whether you're doing it solo in small groups with people that are padded up the most important thing is extend the amount of time that you think is normal go an extra 50 percent beyond 
the normal everyday activity, opening the door, carrying the beers. So it allows people to normalize, switch off a little bit, and that gives you a more authentic condition A to condition B experience. So that's shadow boxing, uh, shadow fighting as a comparison to shadow boxing, both great tools to build into your arsenal alongside milling, sparring, fighting, pressure testing, all that other cool shit too. So give it a play.